welcome to another vlog. Um, my name's Emma, if you haven't been here before. Um, <clears throat> am I in the garden putting a little washing on the clothes horse? One of these days I'll get a clothesline. Soon, I hope. Um, I'm just enjoying this amazing weather today. It's so beautiful here in Northern Ireland, if you don't know where I'm from. And... Uh, these vlogs usually consist of me doing some knitting and some adventures and walks along the lovely coast here. Bit of gardening, bit of just life in general. So hope you enjoy this one. It's going to contain some stuff about my first Sardo experience. I'm currently making the starters. So this vlog will be strung out over a couple of weeks probably. Just so I can show you that process. And um, yeah just what's happening here in life in general um, over the next couple of weeks so hope you enjoy it there'll probably be a, like a good bit of gardening stuff because the garden's starting to look really good and um, I'll show you what I'm working on because I cast on a new project last night actually I chained a new <laughs> project last night so I have to show you that and I think that's everything yeah, so come along with me and enjoy this early summer vlog. Morning everyone. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't really take you along yesterday, but our surface. Um, last night I planted over 80 cosmos plants that I raised from seed. <clears throat> so that was quite a big job and I was very tired at the end of it. So um, didn't have much energy for vlogging. Today I'm actually getting my hair done for the first time in like six months, so I'm pretty excited about that. And I'm going to a wedding tomorrow, so I'll show you how the hair turns out. Um, yeah, I might just show you a close up of the flower beds at the moment. They're looking pretty nice. And I'd say within the next couple of years, it'll really start filling out and looking good. So I'll just show you what it looks like right now and what's happening right here. Rufus is finding a path in here. I've got some nice lupins and some nice foxgloves. I can't remember the variety. One of these red slash purple ones is called Beef Eater. Um, a few of these are from seed as well, actually, and quite a lot of the foxgloves I grew from seed and the Aqualegia. I would really love to get a whole load more big alliums, big purple alliums and pop them in this bed. This is kind of our wild area. We just kind of let it do its thing and add some additions in there. This bed is um, looking nice and full. I think the we've got a nice dolphinium here and another loop in and some cornflower and some astrontia. Um, I have a couple of I don't know if it's a good idea to plant these here or not, but glue bar it chokes. So that'll look nice. Here's the overall look. <clears throat> and this border is starting to look good now. I have a load of Astrantia in this bed and I noticed there's some baby ones have seeded themselves. Look at that. So I'm going to just keep a wee eye on these and then when they get big enough, move them to where I want them to go. But it looks quite good. I took out a broom here. It wasn't very nice looking. So for now I've planted a Dolphinium and some Cosmos, but this area has some problems. I don't know, nothing seems to like thrive in there. I think it's because it's near the hedge and yeah, I'm not really sure. This is Strantia is looking good. This rose did have some buds on it, but a lot of my plants are getting this foamy thing. I'm not actually sure what that is, but I've noticed it on a few things. The Ceanothus is looking actually quite good. I was ready to take out it out as well because I didn't like the shape, but actually it really fills out that space quite well. James here and here. This is Strantia is looking amazing. Really good beside the Ceanothus. In the back, some Veronica. That'll come up in purple spikes. That'll look nice. And I've just transplanted in some pulmonary here and here to fill out these little gaps. 
Um, <clears throat> some very small estrante here. Some favour few that I popped in this year because I think actually it's a really good plant. I think probably the birds brought it to my garden. Um, but I think it's a really, really good plant. Um, some foxgloves, Actea, that'll come up in a big white spike. And another one, the black cow parsley is nearly finished now. It's a nice plant. And here you can see where I've started to put in the cosmos. And there's a couple of roses in. See this? Leaf curl, that's, it's a saw fly you call that. So that's annoying because it doesn't look as beautiful, but I don't think it will affect their flower in or in. I don't know if there's anything you can do about it. But this thing, this rose, um, it's a David Austin or an English rose called Lady of Shalott. And it comes out in apricot flowers with the most unbelievable fragrance. It really is spectacular. <coughs> Planted some more cosmos there. These are day lilies, hemerocallis, and some more here. And again, I've stuck in some cosmos in the holes in this bed just to fill it out this, this year. The Achille are looking quite big and bushy. They weren't in the original planting scheme for this bed, but yeah, I think they look okay, but I don't know if they're a long-term solution. The James are looking amazing. This is Scarlet Tempest and this is totally tangerine. Um, since the last time you've seen this, I've also put hellebores in the middle here. I took them from different places in the garden and also bought a couple, so that should fill out really well. This is Agapanthus navy blue. And I've scattered in some white cosmos, I think they're called candy floss, and some cosmos apricota. This lupin, um, it's not a lupin that I've heard a lot of people talk about, but it's called Persian slipper. And it's almost blue, like lilac to blue, I would say. It's not in the normal realm of lupin colours. I've got three of them, and they're coming up through the James, they look great. Some more cosmos in there. Some weeds. <laughs> and my aunt gave me some borage, so I stuck that in there. I think it's just an annual. And I transplanted this astrante in here. I think that'll look really good on this bed. This is a hydrangea Annabelle, actually. Um, I wasn't sure. <laughs> I cut it to the ground and then I realized, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. It's a herbaceous hydrangea, but yeah, I wasn't sure. There's, I think there's a couple of different schools of thoughts. I think if you cut it to the ground and let it regrow, um, it'll be more floppy. Whereas if you prune it, um, but then different people say different things, so I'm not really sure. The Aquilegia is out in force. Like, look at Rufus, what is he doing? You see that dog? He's trying to escape. <laughs> We've had some of the most amazing sunshine here the last two days. Oh, this is Geranium Roseanne. This is an unbelievably good plant. Just flowers and flowers and flowers. It's fantastic. Oh, here's my neighbour's dog. Hi, Pip! Don't you go through the flower beds mm -hmm. now? I don't like it when you do that. And if these foxgloves self seed themselves, so I popped them in here. I took them out of where they were and popped them in here. And some more cosmos. Um, and then I've popped these globe artichokes in here. I didn't harden them off very well, but the next few days are going to be kind of warm, so I hope they're okay. I think they were really suffering in the pots they were in, so hopefully they'll be happier in here. Eventually, I think they should look really good. So my plan with this bed is, I think, to put keel all around. It was originally fennel, but only one of my seeds germinated, which is annoying. So looks like it's going to be keel. They've, like, all germinated. This is all the strawberries. And I've got some sweet pea here. I have a perennial sweet pea, but I've also popped in some seeds um, of the annual sweet pea because they have a nice scent. Um, 
<laughs> the rest of this bed is potatoes. Two years ago we thought we picked them all out and now look at them. Can't get rid of them once you put them in. Because last year I had this is all filled with lovely dahlias. And now it's filled with potatoes. <laughs> this peony's about to pop and look the elder flowers coming out. So beautiful. I'll have to do something with that when it does come out. But yeah, this is getting ready to pop here. So that's how things are looking at the moment. Sure, I'll take you into the greenhouse. There's not that much in it now that all the seedlings have been planted. So I'll just show you what it looks like. So we've got my tomato plants that is this chart is really trying to bowl it overwintered from last year, but I keep trying to keep it because it's got lots of leaves on it. It'll be good for dinners. So I've got two Shirley tomatoes that I bought from the supermarket <clears throat> or somewhere, garden centre maybe actually, yeah. And then I have four ones that I grew from seed and they're almost the same size as the ones I bought, which is crazy to me how that happens. So I'll definitely be growing from seed in future years. Um, <clears throat> these two, because I bought them first, I had to key in them. But these ones, because they were a bit later of going in, because they were in pots in the greenhouse, I was able to do Monty Dawn's string method, which is where you make a wee hook and use garden twine and make it quite long and set it below the plant and then set the plant on top of the twine and fill it in all around it and then you just twist the twine around the plant like that and it's so easy there's no tying in or anything so so far it's working really well then i have three tumbling toms and they look a bit unhappy to be honest but i'm watering them and feeding them and so on but i don't know I think I put the wrong compost in this. This was it. I only had like seed compost left, so I put that in. But I think it probably holds too much moisture. Maybe these two aren't so bad. Got some nice lettuces down here. Coriander, um, Ami Magus. <coughs> I have a feeling they should be a lot, a lot bigger. I think they like flower in August. Like there's a wee root coming out. So. They're probably ready to be hardened off. They're quite small still though. Um, so I don't know if these will ever come to anything or not, but it'd be really nice if they did. Some Achillea from seed. These seeds are from last year, so they didn't all germinate for some reason, but chili plants. It's probably because I didn't store them correctly. Verbena binariensis from seed. I love growing perennials from seed. It just is so satisfying to me. Some larger Achillea from seed and some kale. So these will be what's planted out here. And these are actually, I think, yeah, the roots are at the bottom. So I think these could do with being harmed off. But to me, they still look so small. They'll just get munched up by snails. So I don't really know what to do about that. If, if you can recommend what size they should be before you plant them out, let me know in the comments. So that's my garden tour all over. This might end up being quite a long vlog because I see that last segment there was eight minutes. So we're probably already at 10, 12 minutes here. Excuse the hair, it's gonna look much better in a few hours. Um, I'm just uh, winding up some yarn into cakes for a new project that I've cast on. This one is time sensitive. <laughs> so I need to kind of get on with it and every night that I go to work on the project, I'm too tired to wind up the skeins into cakes. So I thought, okay, better do it now. So I'll show you what I have here. So I've got three different yarns from my stash. I've got swarbles, is this swarbles and blue texel? I think this is swarbles into blue texel. I didn't obviously label it. This is, I think, hearth decay in an indigo color. And this is something I picked up on holidays one year and it is North Ronaldsay in its natural colour and it's a DK wheat as well. So I have cast on a crochet baby blanket in V stitch. I've never done anything apart from 
the very very basic crochet so I looked I mean this is basic too but I looked up a tutorial and it's a completely new stitch to me but it's so easy I can't believe it and it's going so fast and it's very addictive so I'm using a four millimeter hook and I'm using DK weight yarn so these two are fine but any of the yarns that I'm using that are four ply I'm just holding them holding two strands of the yarn to make it DK weight which is working out very nicely and it gives me a, a much wider variety of colours. I'm using all different types of yarn and don't know if the baby's going to be a boy or a girl so I'm just doing a nice range of colours and um, that I think the mum will like. <laughs> so um, yeah I'm just going to wind these up now. <laughs> Let's look at this hair before we get it done. Let's see the transformation. is the final look of the hair. I'm really really pleased with it. I think it's going to look great at the wedding tomorrow. Um, I'm almost home now so I left off some parcels at the Smarten office and I thought I forgot there's two things I still have to tell you. I have started Sardo Start so I want to show you that over the next couple of days and I have some big news but I'm going to share that a little bit later but by the time you see this video it'll all be confirmed legit and I'll be able to show you properly. So I'm going to go for today and enjoy the sunshine because it's never sunny here and I will speak to you probably in a couple of days time. Um, yeah, see you soon. <laughs> Morning Rufus. So it's the next morning. I was at a lovely wedding yesterday. My little girl was having a sleepover with Granny and Granda, so I had a lie in until half eight. It's now quarter to nine, and I'm going to feed my sourdough starter. This is day eight, so technically it could be ready to use, but I don't think it is because it's not bubbly the whole way through. So I'm going to have a wee look at it here, feed it, and see how it's going. I'm using um, a lean food bod. Her method of making the starter and I'll be using her method to make the bread. So I'm hoping in the next sort of week or so I'll be able to do that. I'm pretty excited so yeah I'll show you my starter here. I've got this little hat on it's just a silicone bag that you can store stuff in in the fridge or freezer. It's the only thing I had so it seems to be working fine. This is how it's looking at the moment. Not too bad, is it? But it's not like super bubbly, I wouldn't say. And on the bottom, I'll show you on the bottom. Like there's no bubbles there. Should there be bubbles there? Not sure. Gonna do another feed and then see how we go.
brought you out here as I thought maybe we could knit and have breakfast together. That's a pigeon. I'm just having some toast today, no porridge. Well, maybe a little bit later if I get hungry. I thought I'd show you what I'm working on. I have kind of three projects on the go. I'll start with my newest cast on. This is a the start of a baby blanket. This is about the same width as all the baby blankets I make because <clears throat> I like them to fold over once so that they can be used um, in like car seats and stuff. So this is for um, a relative of mine and um, the baby's due at the end of July so basically I need to get this finished. <laughs> but you know what? I'm so surprised how fast this is going. This is crochet and it's the V stitch. And I only cast on a couple of days ago. And I do find this stitch very um, addictive and very fast actually. Um, I'm using a lot of yarn that I had in my stash. So we'll chat you through a couple of them if I can remember what they all are. Um, this one is Jameson Smith. This one is Jameson Smith and this one is Jameson Smith. This one is Woolly Mammoth Fibres. It's a limited edition one, as is the white. This one is Roots and Rain that was given to me as a gift. This one is the Sheepfold North Ronaldsay. Absolutely stunning yarn to work with. Woolly Mammoth Fibres Heart Decay. Woolly Mammoth Fibres another limited edition I think maybe I'm not sure which it is maybe it mm, looks darker than swarbles and blue taxel and that's what I'm going for with this blanket so I think if I keep going like this I could have it done within another week or two although I'm gonna have a lot a lot of ends to weave in <laughs> so that will not be fun <coughs> I do like changing colour every row, so I'm really enjoying this project. And it looks really beautiful. So the next project I'm working on is my, if I can get out of the basket, my, um, I'll just get a little bit more toast here. It's my pre-knit for Albina. I'm putting a bit of length on this as well. So for this I'm using two strands of my natural sock yarn, which I've never done before, in a sweater. The swatch turned out so nice. After blocking it was so lovely, so I just thought I need to use this in a project. So I have to knit until it's 35 centimeters long. I haven't measured this in a while, but I think it's maybe getting close. Like I say, it could be within a few centimeters of that. As you can see, I'm marling two colors together. These are two of my newer colors. The limey green is called Mojito Fizz and the pink is called Candy Floss. I think I have some of each in the shop right now, if you're interested. Oh, there's a the dog, that scared me. <laughs> um, so yeah, and I'm looking forward to, like look at that moral. The light's not great just here. I'll try and do a better photo in another place in the garden, but it's nice and bright and summery and I'm really enjoying knitting on it. And everyone who sees me knitting on it comments on the colors. Which is very satisfying when you dye them. <laughs> Um, right, next project. I suppose I should say what I'm wearing. This is my drop sweater by Albina as well. I'm on a little um, Albina, basically uh, almost everything I'm knitting uh, in the last few months has been by her. I just think she's a really, really good designer. She's an absolute genius. And I don't know what way her brain works, but my brain does not work like that. <laughs> so 
hats off to her. Um, I would also like to knit her timepiece jumper. I think it looks really elegant and it would be nice in one colour. Maybe, I don't know what weight it is. I think it might be sport weight. I could maybe use my hard sock and get gauge, but I don't know, I'd have to experiment and see. So last but not least is my dangerous knit needle is my garter stitch jumper light mini or something it's called by Kat and Lenny and so now I have both sleeves done and one cuff almost done I had a bit of a moment with this because I, c I continue knitting in this aubergine colour and I realised I wanted it to be the orange colour so then that set me back a bit. This would be really fast but I'm just really enjoying the other projects. So all I have to do is the cuff here and then the collar and it's done. Um, I'm a bit worried this isn't going to this for my wee girl. I'm a bit worried that it's not going to fit her now. Well it'll block out quite well I think but I would need to be hurry up get it finished. I mean, it's not as if she's probably going to wear it in the summer, but there's definitely some cooler days in the summer as well. Um, I will also have to show you what I'm entering for Ball Money Show. Those entries have to go in tomorrow, so I need to get all my entry cards ready um, and sort out what I'm doing for that. And I have to dye some yarn today as well, so it's going to be a busy day. Um, so yeah, need to get all my ducks in a row for that. I was going to enter this, but now I'm just wearing it all the time. So like, I don't, I don't know if I want to give it for a, the show. I know it's only two days, but um, my toast is a little cold now. So that's all my current projects that I'm working on at the moment. So I'll show you my entries later and then maybe in the next few days I will tell you about my big surprise that I have to tell you about. So stay tuned for that. It's now Saturday evening and I've loaded all of the clips that I've done this week on to iMovie and I realised that it's already 35 minutes long. So I'm going to wrap it up here and then I will catch up with you all in the next vlog which won't be too long away I don't think um, because I have so much to fill you in on. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you haven't already and you would like to and um, see you next time. Bye.